Okay, fantastic. So I'd just like to, to start again. Um, for me, like Thomas, what he presented was the like general view of a GIS system of projection, layers, um, type of information, and what I'm going to do with it. Here we're going to start like doing the second half of the morning, we need to go more into the software so about QGIS. And what I'm going to be doing is really very, very briefly to introduce a little bit the software, what it is about, a bit of history, um, very briefly, and then we're just going to start uh, the practical um, with the first one from Thomas. So about like QGIS, what it is actually, I don't know like how many of you um, have ever used a like, GIS software before? And uh, which one most of the time have you used? That's a local one, bigger graph. Okay. Yeah, it's a local program. I use the ArcGIS. Okay, yeah. And personally, what, like, the main software that I know actually, um, that I used before was ArcGIS, and the main one which are famous somehow, where um, ArcView ArcGIS is the same thing, ArcView is just like an old version of ArcGIS somehow. Um, and then also MapInfo, which I, I don't really know. Anyway, those are like, pretty well-known software, mm -hmm. GIS software that have been used for a long time, quite powerful somehow. Um, and then, well, now we've got like QGIS. And what is the benefit mainly of QGIS? Well, first, it's something which is free. Um, so right now, it's really like quite nice to change about something uh, free. It's also open source, so which means that it's in constant evolution. It's not like set in stone, but basically you've got like a main core software, and then you can add different plugins to it. So that's really extensive, and you can really like improve the architecture of the software. Um, besides that, also what I found personally useful was you can run it on a wide uh, variety of platforms. In the sense that it's not only on Windows, but you can also use it on Mac. And I know, like for RGS, for example, it was not possible. So it's, um, well, as I knew very well RGS, I found with QGIS that it was very nice software because you can do nearly the same thing as uh, RGS, but you can run it on other type of platform like Mac. It's a little bit less heavy, I found it. So when you go like on mission, for example, in developing countries or, or else, it's really useful actually to use QGIS. And you can do like nearly the same thing. So for all these reasons, it's actually, I found it like very, um, a very nice software. And then at the end of the two days, you, you tell us if you like it as well. You know these. And <laughs> uh, about the history a little bit, looking at this. Basically, it's a project which has been started in 2002. So it's just like a couple of people um, who were interested in JS and coding, which like started to, to develop this platform. Because so far, what was existing was only um, expensive or software you have to pay for. You also have like some software that you didn't have to pay for, but somehow you could only like view data, for example, and you couldn't like modify many things. So anyway, they decided with the spirit of open source project uh, software to develop it in 2002, and they were so far like to the version zero up to 2009, and then since 2009 they developed like the version 1.1, etc. And so far we are with the current version of 1.7. So you see, you might have, when I prepare the tutorial, for example, I use the, the version 1.6. So I guess it released like 1.7 quite recently. Anyway, they should be like quite similar. And what we have to keep in mind also that the software, as I say, is not really set in stone because as you can see, like every three months or so, they're gonna like add a new version to it. Uh, six months ago, it was like 1.6, before like 1.5. So it's constantly evolving uh, the software by itself and anybody can add like new extension to it. Um, about like the features, so we're gonna develop that really in detail um, later on in the in the training session and the tutorial. But basically, what you can do with uh, QGIS, like any normal GIS software, is really to be able like to do data viewing, just like looking at the map. You can also edit your map and transform it, and to do also like some kind of um, analysis. Uh, even though it might be a little bit limited for uh, QGIS in terms of analysis. But somehow, what, what we do like in everyday job uh, in public health, you don't need like fancy stuff. You just like need practical one, and anything practical can be done actually um, with QGIS, from what I've seen. You can it support like different format and projection. So that's what um, Thomas was talking about. Well, like about you can like support like vectors or raster, and for vectors actually you can import software or file that were used in ArcGIS or in Mapping Info. So most of the time you got a shape file. Uh, which is going to be read by RGIS, it can be read as well by QGIS. So most of the shapefiles that you use in your previous GIS software can be used with QGIS. 
And with raster, well, as we discussed, um, you can like download it or find them and just like import them into QGIS. And once again, in case I was not clear, you can have like a lot of plugins, so you can modify like the architecture of the software. And because they are like de being developed, for example, when we were discussing about statistical plugin, if you add like a new plugin, then you might you will have like new function added to your software, which makes it really powerful somehow. Uh, for the people who know, they are actually somehow like the same spirit as a, as a little bit, where you can add like different package to to your core software. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing mainly today. We're gonna be really like to be able to view different like features in QGIS. So we're gonna import map, then we're gonna be able like to select some feature, identify them, see what they correspond to, um, to do some editing, search for different attributes, to do labeling as well if you want to have the name of the region, for example, change the symbology, have like different colors, etc. etc. So everything is related to really importing the map and then creating like a nice map to corresponding to your needs. Also, what we're going to do, um, so import, as I said, and then you can create somehow new features as well if you want to. So you can import like your polygon, you can import, I don't know, like some points, and then you're going to select only your point which fits within a polygon um, and create like a new shape file of it. It might be like clearer when we do it anyway. And then some do like some special analysis. It's not that much actually, but more calculation. For example, we're gonna see in the afternoon now to do like incidence map um, to be able not to only like import and visualize points, but also like to calculate an incidence per 100,000 and to, um, to, to map that after. And the last thing that we will see like today will be also, which is important actually to publish your map. So at the end you did like your map in your QGIS software, but you want to have a nice title, a legend, uh, a scale, um, so we'll see also how to, to do that. <coughs> Basically, at the end of the day, what you should be able to do is really like to do like a nice normal map that you will be required to do like during your daily activities. Okay.